On March 21st, 2019, a team of scientists from Western Australia headed out on a boat to observe orcas, but they had no idea what they would witness. Several orcas teamed up to violently attack an adult blue whale. The length of their prey was from 59 to 72 feet, but the flank of the whale was already covered with tooth marks. Most of the whale's dorsal fin was bitten off, but the face suffered the most brutal injuries. Orcas ripped the meat down to the bone. Like a battering ram, three predators slammed into the side of the whale, and another orca began feeding on its tongue. As a result, the blue whale died about an hour after the arrival of the research team. But the story didn't end there. About 50 orcas feasted on the whale after its death and ate everything they could. According to the researchers, this was not the first time orcas attacked blue whales, and not the last one. For example, another group of orcas killed a blue whale calf in 2019 and a juvenile blue whale in 2021. But it's one thing to kill a calf or a juvenile, and quite another to kill an adult animal. This is not an easy task. An adult blue whale is a large, strong opponent, and it takes a lot of energy, strength, and endurance to kill it. The only chance for orcas to do this is to team up and work together. And they understand this very well. In addition, the blue whale is large enough, which means every orca in the group will definitely grab a bite. So why not coordinate an attack? Orcas are damn good at teamwork. The attack on the blue whale, which happened in March 2019, was coordinated by at least 12 orcas, led by 8 adult females and 1 male. The younger orcas were watching from the side. By the way, note that it was adult females who led the attack, and this is no coincidence. It's female orcas that are considered more ferocious and aggressive predators, and scientists discovered this not so long ago. Previously, it had been assumed that for orcas' attacks on large whales to be successful, adult males need to be involved. But all three of the attacks I mentioned were led by females, which are about 20% smaller. But what could be the reason for that? Well, most likely it's because they're mothers. According to the researchers, females need to feed their young, and they may also need to eat more often than males. This means that females may be more likely to attack. Actually, orcas can hunt down prey the size of blue whales not only thanks to their teamwork, orcas know exactly how they need to act and they use the same tricks every time. First of all, they bite the whale on the fins, tail, and jaw, most likely to slow down their prey. Orcas also push the whale's head underwater to keep it from surfacing for air. In case you forgot, whales are not fish and they need to rise to the surface to take a breath. At the same time, some orcas may push the whale from below so that the prey can't dive and hide from them in deep waters. Another strategy orcas sometimes use involves grabbing a large whale by the tail and fins and then trying to turn it over on its back. If orcas succeed, they hold their prey in this position long enough for the whale to suffocate. Yes, orcas can't always take down the whale, but this doesn't stop them. About 11.5% of adult humpback whales have scars left from encounters with orcas. Well, I gotta say that orcas still don't risk attacking adult humpback whales. Almost no fresh scars were seen on adult humpback whales. It's much easier for orcas to hunt down one of the young than to deal with an adult humpback whale. The reason for that is the tail. The humpback whale's tail is a lethal weapon, and one blow can easily kill an orca. Well, the flippers of a humpback whale sometimes weigh a ton, and they're smaller than its flukes. And you know, given how good orcas are at everything related to whale hunting, it'd be weird if people didn't find a way to put it to good use. In Twofold Bay in Australia, whalers established shore whaling stations in the 1830s. Over a century, the local orca population collaborated with the whalers, alerting them when larger whales passed by. I mean, literally, orcas swam into the bay and slapped their tails to summon whalers to hunt together. Probably at some point, orcas simply realized that this way they put in much less effort, but certainly got prey. The most famous helper of whales is an orca male named Old Tom. The activity of the leader of an orca pod which herded baleen whales into the bay was noticed around 1895. His group was called the Killers of Eden, and they were active between 1840 and 1930. Old Tom is believed to have assisted three generations of one particular family of whalers. This family relied on traditional whaling techniques such as rowboats and hand harpoons, which didn't disturb the orcas with loud noises or stress them out. Perhaps that's why the orcas were ready to help these people out. The relationship between orcas and the whaler family was based on mutual help. 
If a man fell overboard during one of the whaling trips, the orcas would protect the man from danger until he was back on board. Similarly, if orcas became entangled in fishing lines, whalers would cut them free. Using the bay's unique geography, orcas ambushed whales that were vastly bigger than themselves. The predators herded the whales into shallow water so that the whalers would finish them off. When a whale died, orcas feasted on its lips and tongue, leaving the rest of the carcass to the whalers. Well, Old Tom was such a famous orca that he even got a Wikipedia page. Old Tom was found dead on September 17, 1930. It's believed that at the time he was over 90 years old. Old Tom's skeleton was placed in the Eden Killer Whale Museum, where it can still be seen today. At this point, you must be thinking that orcas are super dangerous predators, real beasts of the seas and all that. Well, you're right. They're so ravenous that people began to use orcas as a scarecrow. Officials in the fishing town of Astoria, Oregon launched a motorized fake orca in 2015 in an attempt to scare away the sea lions. Hundreds of them invaded the port, and although this usually happened only in winter, they decided to stay in the port for good. Something had to be done about them, but the town simply didn't have enough finances to build some kind of barriers. The sea lions were noisy, messy, and even ate the fish that the locals usually caught. Overall, the problem couldn't be solved without the help of a fake orca. Well, back then, in 2015, the scarecrow orca didn't prove very useful. It also flipped belly up a couple of times on the way to its destination, but this didn't stop the locals. After all, they didn't have many options. No, 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 no! But to be honest, the scarecrow didn't surprise me that much. Unlike orcas that helped the whales, on January 10th, 2022, a very strange article appeared in the Whale Watch Western Australia website. It told of a juvenile humpback whale that had been sighted near the coastal town of Bremer Bay. While they took a closer look, the witnesses discovered that the whale was tangled in fishing gear and, judging by its exhausted state, it had been trapped for a long time. The situation only got worse when it turned out that orcas were heading towards the whale. It had seemed that a young, helpless whale is the perfect prey. But instead of having their potential prey for lunch, the orcas pulled off most of the gear from the humpback whale and then swam away. Yep, they just swam away, leaving astonished onlookers to wonder if they did it on purpose or by accident. In any case, it was very nice of the orcas, although scientists think that we can't attribute altruism to them. The exhausted and weakened whale fought for his life and even suffered from the so-called whale lice. What do lice have to do with that? Well, judging by the observations, orcas are quite squeamish. They even skin the whales before eating them to get rid of the parasites. To be honest, I like the witty theory that scientists proposed. Orcas decided that prey was not worth the effort and left the whale to fatten up. Until next time. But don't think that whales are completely helpless. If they couldn't fight orcas, they would have died out long ago. For example, female whales whisper to their calves to keep them away from orcas. In any case, this has been observed in southern right whales. Whales are known for their songs, the mysterious sounds they usually make at depth, but even in the ocean, loud screams will attract unnecessary attention, which is why female whales often travel closer to the shore with their calves so that the crashing of coastal waves would mask their sounds. In general, most whale signals are designed for long range, but if they need to, females can whisper. That is, make relatively quiet sounds so that only calves can hear them. As a rule, the whisper fades into the background noise at a distance of 650 feet, which means it doesn't attract the attention of predators and the calves aren't exposed to unnecessary risk. Another defense strategy used by whales, this time it's sperm whales, is the marguerite formation. This bizarre name means a special arrangement of a pod of sperm whales where animals surround the most vulnerable individuals and put their powerful tails outwards. Remember I mentioned how orcas respond to tails? So this is actually a working strategy. Not every predator will dare poke its head into the middle of a deadly sperm whale formation. This is how sperm whales protect their calves, females who are giving birth, and wounded and weakened fellow whales. In short, those who are most vulnerable to orcas' attacks. Some whales go even further. Beaked whales can go into stealth mode collectively by coordinating their actions. Scientists discovered this not so long ago. Actually, beaked whales use echolocation to find their prey a perfectly normal, working hunting strategy, but with one nasty side effect. The echolocation alerts nearby orcas to their presence, who don't mind eating whales. 
And the beaked whales had to work out an effective but rather energy-consuming trick, synchronized dives and silent, unpredictable ascents. Scientists discovered this by accident. Unlike other whales, beaked whales dive in a way that doesn't seem to make sense. They dive silently and only to a great depth, where orcas will definitely not follow them and begin their hunt. This lasts about an hour, after which the whales emerge just as silently. And not somewhere nearby, but about 0.6 miles away from the place where they've made any sounds lately. This way, orcas can't track beaked whales. Well, or it becomes much more difficult to do so. However, this survival tactic comes at a cost. The researchers estimated that these deep hunting dives, which are time-consuming, reduce foraging time by more than 35%. But here, you have to choose. Either you don't eat, or you will get eaten. Now let's get back to humpback whales. I've already mentioned that orcas attack adult whales in rare cases, mainly because humpback whales can actually fight back. And it's not even about one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes humpback whales fight entire orca pods. A fight like that happened in the Salish Sea between British Columbia and Washington State, where curious tourists filmed everything. For 20 minutes, a humpback whale fought a pod of orcas, which included nine of them. Moreover, the whale wasn't defending itself, it was attacking the predators, after following them for some time earlier. Experts say that the whale's aggression may have been caused by fear of attack as it constantly made sounds as it rose to the surface, most likely to scare off orcas. While videos of such encounters are rare, it's not uncommon for humpback whales to go on the offensive. In 2016, researchers at Oregon State University identified 30 cases of humpback whales attacking orcas if they started chasing the whales or other mammals. You can see where these encounters took place. The humpback whale is, to our knowledge, the only cetacean that deliberately approaches attacking mammal-eating killer whales and can drive them off, says Dr. Robert Pittman, a marine ecologist. And yes, you heard right. Humpback whales can actually protect other animals from orcas. They actually do it. In May 2012, a pod of orcas attacked a gray whale and its calf. After a short struggle, the calf was killed. A sad but common story. But what happened next defies easy explanation. Two humpback whales, which were already on the scene at the time of the attack, didn't react at first to what was happening. However, after the death of the calf, 14 more humpback whales arrived and started to tussle with the orcas. For six and a half hours, the humpback whales were keeping the orcas away from the carcass of the calf. They made loud noises and slashed at the orcas with their tails every time the predators approached to eat it. At the same time, krill, the favorite food of humpback whales, swam very close by, but the whales just ignored it. They were just protecting the carcass of a gray whale calf. And this was not an isolated case. <coughs> There are several theories that explain why this happens. For example, some scientists believe that humpback whales benefit by interfering with orca hunting. Humpback whales know that gray whale calves are vulnerable, but adults can put up some fight when faced against orcas. This is why humpback whales help the calves to survive the difficult period of youth so that later there will be more adult whales. According to another theory, for humpback whales, this is personal. As I said, many of them have scars left by the attacks of orcas. Perhaps it's all about holding a grudge. This explains why humpback whales protect seals, sea lions, and porpoises from orcas. They even help sunfish, although this doesn't make any sense at all. It's not even a mammal. Maybe the reason is altruism. After all, whales are smart enough to just want to help someone. There's another theory which partly contradicts the last assumption. In the minds of humpback whales, the noise that orcas make while hunting means a threat to their own offspring. They're sort of programmed to respond to these sounds, and it doesn't matter who exactly is at risk. In addition, scientists who stick to this theory point to another important thing. The whales don't want to help another animal survive. They want to stop the orca from killing, because in the end, it can kill their calf as well. Well, it's all kind of confusing. However, seems like the number of aggressive clashes between orcas and humpback whales is on the rise. At the end of September 2022, near the border of the United States and Canada, there was a real mass brawl between these inhabitants of the ocean. More than a dozen aggressive orcas versus a pair of female humpback whales on the defensive. The intense confrontation, which lasted several hours, 
reportedly included fighting, tail slapping, flipper biting, and loud noises that could be heard above the surface. It's not clear who exactly emerged victorious from this battle, as the fog presented seeing the outcome, but apparently the showdown was grandiose. Encounters between these two species have become more frequent, and it's all because of… no. Oddly enough, human activity has nothing to do with it. We don't make orcas or whales more aggressive or force them to fight for prey in order to somehow survive in a changed world. Clashes between whales and orcas happen because the population of humpback whales has recently rebounded after a sharp decline. Whaling once harmed these animals, but now they're ready to charge into battle. Actually, orcas, as you already realized, are ready to attack different prey, but recently their clashes with humpback and blue whales have become more often. As I said, the ocean is recovering from centuries of whaling, and orcas are back on the same diet they once had before humans caught and killed most of their food. In general, the confrontation between whales and orcas didn't begin yesterday. They've been at war with each other since ancient times, and only the intervention of whalers gave the orcas a slight head start. Although there's much debate on when their war actually started, I'll try to explain why now. Scientists have been studying orcas for a very long time. Because these predators are quite interesting, they're smart and can team up to hunt giant whales, though we still can't understand how and when such behavior could develop. There are so few fossils of orca ancestors that it might seem as if they don't exist at all. And yet, the data that scientists have led them to unlikely conclusions. Turned out that none of the ancestors of modern orcas appeared to have hunted very large prey. The ancient orcas preferred medium and large fish, but they certainly wouldn't eat the giant blue whale. It's believed that the ancestors of orcas developed the ability to prey on other marine mammals quite late. This happened during the Pleistocene period, from 2.5 million to 11,700 years ago. That is, ancient orcas and ancient whales used to live in peace. That doesn't seem to be too surprising. Yeah, they didn't clash back then, so what? The thing is, scientists used to have a completely different opinion on the matter. The results of the new study I just shared contradict the popular theory that orcas caused whales to become whales. Allegedly, blue whales and humpback whales were simply forced to grow huge in order to somehow protect themselves from attacks. And now it turns out that the whales became huge much earlier than the orcas began to feed on them, and for some completely different reason. And you might have a legitimate question. If orcas are such tough predators that team up and even collaborate with people to kill and eat whales, shouldn't we worry about the whales? After all, only humpback whales are capable of fighting orcas, and only adult individuals. This doesn't sound like a lot. Is it time to panic? Well, I'll try to reassure you, but this will only work if you care more about whales than orcas. So according to a study published in the Science Journal on September 28, 2018, more than half of the world's orca populations could face extinction in 30 to 50 years. Guess who's to blame? Okay, actually, while humans are really to blame, orcas are affected by toxic chemicals that are already banned in the U.S. and many other countries. Moreover, these bans were enforced back in the 1970s and 1980s. Yet today, orcas in the Northern Hemisphere are among the most heavily contaminated animals on Earth. They suffer from polychlorinated biphenyls, organic compounds once used in capacitors, oil paints, and coolants. Then people realized that they'd created something terribly dangerous, but it was already too late. Even now, these compounds are thought to alter orcas' behavior, damage their immune systems, and cause so much reproductive harm that many orcas won't survive the coming decades at all. The toxic substances prove to break down slowly. Moreover, 80% of global PCB stockpiles have not yet been destroyed. But this is only one of the threats orcas are facing. It's often not even the dominant one. Don't forget about the ocean noise, which Steve and I mentioned several times. It has a very strong effect on orcas, at least because it makes hunting more difficult and time-consuming. And this, in turn, causes orcas to metabolize their subcutaneous fat where those harmful compounds settle. These substances enter the bloodstream, and this doesn't promise anything good. In general, while the whale population is gradually recovering, the orcas seem to be getting worse. So let's not worry about the humpback whales. Let's worry about orcas. See you later.